Hi guys, what's up? Toba Logo here. Today we are here with the 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil game. We've done quite a lot of 2014s recently, but today we have an exception because we're going to do a qualifying run with Comoros. Now I know you guys have been asking for a Comoros run quite a few times uh, over the past few weeks and um, I decided to give it to you guys because we got a historic win over Ghana 3-2 in the Africa Cup of Nations. It didn't really matter too much for Comoros. Because, well actually no, because they, they were third place and they could potentially be the third best place team. It was important because obviously it was their first ever AFCON win and they beat Ghana. A team like Comoros, you think, now half star in this game, so you think in around about today's standards, they'd probably be around about a star, maybe a star and a half or something. And they beat Ghana, a team which is... Um, considered one of the better teams in Africa. It's a huge result and 3-2 as well. It's literally like like Comoros scored and then Ghana scored, then Comoros scored, then Ghana scored, then, then Comoros finished them off. It was a really good performance so we're gonna try and see if we can get Comoros into the World Cup. Doing custom fixtures and um, this is what it's given me. It's given me Eritrea. I'll take that any day because Eritrea are one of the worst teams in the game. Okay so as you all know that we got to do some friendly matches before we actually do our playoff match. So I'm going to try and squeeze in as many friendlies as possible but just do like highlighted if you know what I mean. I might skip some friendly matches as well that I don't feel that I want to play. Right now we're going to do one against Canada which will be a huge test for Comoros. Can Comoros go all the way to, well Canada's got to come all the way here. I mean doesn't seem worth it really. It's quite a big trip. Okay so our first friendly match is against Canada at home. So Let's see what Comoros can do against a nation like Canada. It's going to be a very tough match. Canada are miles better than us. We are one of the lowest ranked teams in the world currently. I'm hoping to change that with my managerial style and everything like that. But we'll see how Comoros do here. The Africa Cup of Nations has been pretty wild recently. There's been some huge results. And um, I'm really hoping that there's more to come in the knockout stages. We're going to be like this all of this match, just trying to defend against Canada. We'll probably have like maybe one or two key chances, but I reckon that's all we're going to get. Definitely going to have to do a lot of training sessions with this team to get them up to any kind of decent style of football. Crossed in, that's a good cross by Canada. It's headed out and what a say, but they scored the unlucky sort of deflection and Canada finally have broken through us. It's 1-0 to Canada. It was going to happen. It was always going to happen, especially with an attack like that when we can't really sort of head the ball away. The header there, a good save, but goalkeeper just didn't get up in time. Half time and we're only 1-0 down against Canada. I think Comoros can be a little bit proud of themselves for the way they defended up until that point. Look at Canada right now. Look, they've got around about seven people, maybe eight people on me. They're very defensive for a team playing a small nation like the Comoros. I think with smaller teams, when doing a qualification run on the 2014 game, it's a lot more important to do friendly matches and the training than it is for a side such as, I don't know, a four-star team or a five-star team. Because with smaller teams, your form can dip drastically if you, if you lose games or fail training sessions. 90th minute. Is there a special attack going to happen right now for Comoros? Here comes this guy. I'm just going to... No, oh, I was going to go for it, but his um, technique and his uh, touch did let him down a little bit. But Comoros only lose 1-0 against Canada. And um, we can't really be too disappointing with that because it was only a deflection, really, that made us lose. Otherwise, I think we would have drew that game. I think our next match is against the Bahamas. So, yeah, not really um, a too tough of an opponent, but definitely one that can uh, cause some problems against us. They are a one-star team. Oh, it was Barbados even, not uh, Bahamas. So it was one beginning with a B. But yeah, Comoros versus Barbados, another quite a long way to travel, not as long as um, Canada's. Here we go then, Barbados versus Comoros. This is going to be an interesting one really because uh, this is our first team that is kind of on our level, maybe slightly above. We could do something here. This defence should be a little bit more exploitable than Canada's defence. Canada were really sitting back and just not allowing anything 
fair play to them. But, I mean, like I said during the match, I was uh, only a half-star team. So, it's just like, what is the point in doing that? Again, players don't go towards the ball. And I know I'm a half-star team, but when I've made the pass, just take a step forward. That's all you need to do. Quite tough defence. It might take a long shot, I think, to get the first goal and almost scoring from just outside the box. I told you, keep the um, defence occupied and then just catch them off guard when you shoot. The goalkeeper had to make one. That's a great ball. Can we capitalise on this chance? No, for goodness sake. That defender did really well to cut us out, but I should have shot a little bit earlier, possibly. Half time and the scores are locked at 0-0. It hasn't really been too much of an interesting game. It's been a pretty dead game so far, to be honest. I think both teams are just cancelling each other out. And this is the problem we're going to have when we face Eritrea. Because Eritrea are one of the worst teams on the game. So they're going to just try and defend for most of the uh, time that we play them. And this is what Barbados are doing right now. Obviously Barbados are better than both Eritrea and Comoros. And I really hate it when you... You have a friendly game like this, you're trying to get your stats up and the computer's like, well, I'm going to give you the most boring experience of your life. Oh, we've stolen it. Come on. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Hang on. Yes, we just stolen it. we stolen it in the 90th minute and it's Abdu with the goal. we stolen that and it was lucky. It was incredibly lucky. Comoros deserved it, though. We were constantly pressing Barbados and um, their defensive play could only last for so long and it only well it almost uh, favored them but we got really lucky it was only a friendly game but they did well to get that victory that will help us massively so our next friendly is going to be against tanzania another african side it will give us good experience um how another sort of one star team plays i think tanzania may be slightly higher than one star team literally right next to each other these two nations so is it a derby? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt that Tanzania have a derby against Comoros. Third friendly of this video against Tanzania. Let's see if we can get a good win against them and keep rolling with the form. And then hopefully we'll be ready for the other nations that await us in the friendly matches. Of course, our matchup with Eritrea is still quite far away. And I want to try and do this as properly as I can. I've only simulated one friendly match so far. And that was against Costa Rica. I didn't really fancy playing against them. But thankfully, when I simulated it, we drew that game. Oh, wow. That was a great ball by Tanzania. And they scored. Literally, in the second minute, I gave away a foul. They just over the top threw ball or whatever you want to call it. And there was no defenders there. Easy as you like for Tanzania. And now we've got an uphill battle. Here we go. Oh, my God. I thought... Like, that was going to go straight in, but no, no, goalkeeper denies us. That would have been a great equaliser. Oh, come on, ref, really? I, I didn't even really touch him that much. And we've already got two yellow cards to our players. That can't be great. Going for it. That's not bad. Oh, just uh, got behind the ball a bit too much. Oh, I missed my tackle. That's going to be a red card, isn't it? It is a red card. Double yellow card into a red. He's off. So we're uh, 1-0 down at half time with a red card to our name as well. So I don't think we're going to be winning this match. Take the shot. Go for it. Oh, just over the bar. They got some good shots on them, but they're just not on target. Oh, snatched away from Tanzania. Defensive laps, perhaps. Oh, that shot was just poor. Cross that in. That's not bad. Oh, my God. Why didn't you just like go up for the head or something? Go on, come on, Ross. Oh, another wasted opportunity. This team needs a shooting drill or something because that should have gone in. There we go. We just lost against Tanzania 1-0. So we've got two losses and one win so far and one draw through the simulation. So not too bad really for a nation like Comoros. I just wish that I was able to perform better in the matches that I did lose. Our next match in our friendly schedule is against Bermuda. I don't think I played Bermuda on this game. But they do have some good players, like Naki Wells, and um, that's probably the only Bermuda player I actually know. But every time I've done a one-star World Cup, like a simulation, Bermuda come very close 
to winning it all. So they must be a high ranking one star team. Again, a fair way to travel for this side, but we are away from home in this one. Let's hope that we don't get lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda versus Comoros, two island nations against each other. Bermuda are a very strong one-star team. They've got a good striker up front to complement that as well. So yeah, I think that we're going to have some problems again in this match. I hope not. I hope I can steal it away from them. Through ball, here we go. It's this guy, he's a new striker and well, we got the rebound anyway, and it's uh, Jajabari, or whatever, however you say it. He scores in the fifth minute, and could this be where Comoros start to kick off their offense a little bit? That guy who was running through seemed pretty quick, and then to grab onto the rebound like that and just volley it straight in, perfect. 1-0 to Comoros in the first five minutes. Let's hope that we can just get a great win against Bermuda before we start off our qualification campaign in the Africa zone. I think we've got one more friendly after this, and I'm fairly sure it's against Algeria. Good ball. Oh, I think I got slid out then. That looked like a penalty to me, game. You're saying to me that this wasn't a penalty. Look, he slid me out, and the goalkeeper took me out as well. Oh, that was a great ball by that Burton guy. Into the middle there, and the shot was a bit of a dodgy one, and it's 2-0. It's Yusuf with the goal. To make it 2-0. Great play all round. The shot was a bit dodgy, but it's fine. It, all that counts is that he scored. I don't know how highly ranked they are, but I know that Naki Wells is a really good striker. And, um, you know, he's played in, like, League One and the Championship and stuff like that. So, I don't know, like, what's happening with them. I think maybe it's just a case of they've got one known player and then the rest of them are just... A bunch of players I don't really know of. Threw a ball into the box. That wasn't a great one, but we almost scored from it. This is literally all Bermuda's been doing. Like, just doing this. Just holding onto the ball and then just twisting and turning around like this. I hate that part of the game. Like, the rest of the game is fine, but, like, when, when players start doing that, it's just like, come on. You're literally, like, killing my brain cells. Oh, that's a fantastic strike. That was actually accidental as well, because I was trying to tackle someone else, and it was a bit of button delay, which almost turned into a goal. And there we go. We get a good win against Bermuda. More than one goal as well. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Our next friendly match and our final friendly match of this video is against Algeria, one of the best African sides we can play. So, doing a defending drill just to top up the defending. Here we go then, Algeria versus Comoros. The biggest match I've probably played so far, uh, next to the Canada match anyway. Um, yeah, we'll see how we get on against them, see how we can hold our own against a team like Algeria. I'm hoping that they're not playing their main players, but I just saw Slomani turn round then, so I'm a bit worried. This guy, can he get a shot off? Oh, it just skims the post. Here we go. Here comes Rashid. Go on. Oh, good save. And just wide. We had the chance to get the rebound goal, but no, just goes wide. Go for the shot, and it's deflected. I don't know why the guy who was running alongside of me decided to drop back. Could have been offside, potentially, but I don't know. It didn't look offside to me. We've really bowed hard in this one. Still nil-nil on the score sheet. You would have thought Algeria would have taken the lead, but we've had a few chances to make him think otherwise. Uh-oh, Algeria on the press, and all it took was Brahimi just to shoot just on the edge of the box, and it goes straight in under my goalkeeper, my 48 rate keeper, and Algeria have finally got the goal that they were looking for. Come on. Shoot! Oh, I thought we snuck it in at the near post. The goalkeeper denies us. Imagine if we got that equaliser. We were holding them off and it almost went straight in. So we only lost 1-0 against Algeria. It's not a great result for them, really, although they won. Um, it's probably a better result for us because we held on until the 52nd minute. And um, yeah, then we kept holding on, not letting up any more goals. We had a few chances as well. So we are finally here at our two-legged tie against Eritrea in the first round of African qualifying. Who will go through in this one? I hope it's me. I mean, I feel like even though I've taken a lot of L's in these friendlies, 
I think that I can still overcome Eritrea. First round of African qualifying against Eritrea, a two-legged tie. We are at home for this one. We need to get a good result at home, or at least if we can't do it here, we need to hold on for a draw and then uh, go to Eritrea's ground and beat them away from home. Remember, the away goal rule still stands in these tournaments. This guy's going through and he's just been tackled. Header. Header again? Oh, there was a nice sequence of headers, but how did you miss the last one? Here comes this guy, though. Goes for the shot, and underneath the keeper, he scores to make it 1-0. This is the substitute I'm talking about. Burton Devanes, or however you say it, he scores to make it 1-0 to Komarovs. He's been good ever since that other player, other forward, has been injured. He's been there, and um, he's been making some crucial plays. Could he be the man... That takes us to the World Cup. Through a ball. Here comes Yusuf. Can Yusuf score the goal? The second goal? Yes, he can. That was good play. And it's 2-0. And I think this tie is effectively over for Eritrea. I mean, they've already conceded two goals. Um, can we get more? Can we make it an absolute mountain for them to climb? I didn't think, no offence to Eritrea, they are one of the worst teams on this game. So I should be beating them. Here comes Rashid. Can he score? No? Okay. Oh, we still got it. And that was a really, really unlucky deflection for Eritrea. And um, that's 3-0. Oh, here comes Eritrea. Could they get one back? And oh, that was a really poor shot. Maybe I put too much pressure on him. Eritrea on the attack. Can they get a decent cross off? No? Oh, wait straight into the path of this guy and he scores. Okay, so they get one of them and it's Tekel with the goal. And that is 3-1 on aggregate. Hopefully it won't change too much. A bit of a mistake from us. But it's fine. Morocco are just demolishing Egypt 4-1. You'd think that Egypt would have been like a third round contender. But obviously not. And that's it for the first leg. We won 3-1 at home. Now we turn our attention to the second leg. Uh, maybe a single goal would do it. Even if, well obviously a draw would do it. But... The problem is Eritrea scored in this game, so it gives them a reason to go hard at home. Okay, so second leg of this two-legged tie against Eritrea. We're already 3-1 up. Let's hope that we can stop Eritrea from scoring against us. It's only a very small threat. We all know that they're not too brilliant in front of goal. Um, they did score against me in the, the first leg, but... Um, that was only sort of a mistake anyway, and we're already 3 0 up at that point anyway. So let's build on what we have and try and get some more goals. Stolen away from by this guy, he shoots and he doesn't capitalize on the mistake. If he could actually turn, then that'd be great. That was a great shot and a really good save by the Eritrea keeper. Eritrea seemed to be a bit more aggressive at home than they were away. Maybe they were just a bit more. I don't know, cautious away from home. But here, at home, they're definitely a lot more aggressive, especially defensively. I can't really get past them at the moment. Well, half-time, it's still nil-nil. It's not a problem because we still go through on this result. Comoros have not been fantastic in this game, it has to be said. A bit lacklustre on the attack, but they don't really need to be. All I wanted, really, though, was just one goal to put it miles out of reach. And that shot, oh, what a save by the keeper. Probably should have gone into one of the corners of the net. Here we go. Komoros on the attack. Shot. The rebound shot gets blocked again. And Eritrea are surviving in this match. If they did this in the first leg, they could have potentially held me and gone to penalties. Because I haven't even managed to score in this game. Well, that's it. We got through to the second round of African qualifying. And um, that match there was, it was it was pretty bad. It was a pretty bad match. But I understood why Eritrea were playing like that. They were just playing super defensive, trying to stop me from absolutely blowing them out of the water, so to speak. So I'm really proud that Comoros have got through. We'll find out our next opponents in the next video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was quite a long one with a lot of friendly matches and um, only a couple of goals in most of the matches. But nevertheless, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always. And I'll see you again for the next video.